Good day, everyone. I am Rea Jamaica Reyes in DTL A1, Section J1. Today, me and my group mates will be discussing the Module 3, Lesson 1, or the non-digital and digital skills and tools in delivery technology enhanced lessons. Lesson 1. Development and use of non-digital or conventional materials. Here are the learner's outcome. First, describe the procedures for developing conventional instructional materials. Second, develop instructional materials based on a given topic and strategy. Third, describe the factors to consider in revising media selections and delivery system for given instruction. Instructional materials are defined as print and non-print items that are rested to impact information to students in educational process. And instructional materials have different forms, a digital and non-digital, digital tools, are conveyed via digital media, while non-digital instructional materials don't use any computer. Interest or, in other words, an old way of learning. There are also several factors to consider in developing instructional materials. One, they promote meaningful communication and effective learning. Two, they ensure better retention, thus making learning more permanent. Three, they help to overcome the limited classroom by making the accessible accessible. Four, they provide a common experience upon which late learning can be developed. They encourage participation, especially if students are allowed to manipulate materials used. Instructional materials are essential tools in learning every subject in the school curriculum. It helps the students to interact with the words, symbols, and ideas in ways to develop their abilities in reading, listening, solving, using media, and technology. There are also several factors to consider in developing instructional materials. 1. Develop a storyboard and working outline based on the subject goals and objectives. 2. Identify existing institutional resources including materials and teachers' capability. 3. The teacher may research off the shelves materials that have been developed by others to determine if their approach could be useful. 4. Explore the possibility of adopting concepts of other teachers without infringing on anyone's copy protected design. 5. Modify existing materials based on the objectives of the lesson. 6. If the constructional materials are effective, you can share them with other teachers. Number 7. The teacher developer can also sell his her materials available. In summary, instructional materials have a great impact on our learners because when the learning, we use our ears and eyes and we only rely on what is heard and not seeing an actual views, it would be hard for us to identify and learn. For example, if you discuss and describe it to a learner, they can only imagine but not really sure about the real picture of it. Let's move on to the different types of non-digital materials. First is the diorama, a miniature three-dimensional scene in which models of figures are arranged against a background to showcase your learning about your subject. Nature table. A nature table 
is materials usually related to our environment that is collected and put together to set up a nature in a classroom. It is to help students to explore more about our ecosystem. Hi, my name is Catherine Plaza and I'm going to continue to discuss the instructional material. A writing board can display information written with chalk in chalkboard or blackboard or a special pens in whiteboard. Although there are usually more effective methods of transmitting information, the writing board is still the most commonly used visual aid. Make text and drawings large enough to be seen from the back of the room. It should be large text so that everyone will see, especially those students who have blurry eyes. Flip chart. It is a large tablet or pad of paper, usually on a tripod or stand. Zigzag board. It is a multi-board series of three or four rectangular boards. They are joined together along the sides of hinges so that they can be easily folded up and carried. Hi, my name is Luce Ginso. To continue with, let's proceed to the number six, which is the wall display. Displaying items on a classroom wall is a well-known, tried and tested educational method. Wall display is the collection of many different types of items and materials put up on the wall to make an interesting and informative display. In a classroom, the display can consist of students' own work. In development work, it can be used to convey information to the community. The roof and wall display board. This board consists of two parallel horizontal poles tied loosely together with a rope. Visual aids such as posters can be pinned to the rope. This kind of display board is invaluable where there are few solid walls for displaying information. It has no solid backing and can be made quickly for teaching, training, and when working with communities. And now, let us go to the guidelines when designing conventional instructional material. Number one is unity. Use only one idea for each visual aid and include a headline. Number two, simplicity. Make ideas and relationships simple and easy to recall. Avoid cluttering a visual with too many words, numbers, or graphics. Number three, legibility. Make the letters big and readable for all the audience, especially at the back. Number four, consistency. Use the same type style and art style to communicate clearly the intended message. Number five, clarity. Avoid type that is too small to read and avoid all caps. Observe proper writing to avoid confusing the audience. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you learned something from our video and it would be a great help if you would leave a comment down below. Bye!